Hello everyone. I told you a couple of weeks ago that we have just started mechanical ventilation in our program and what my goal is is to post at least one mechanical ventilation question a week as we progress within our program. So kind of sticking with my curriculum and giving you the benefits of just working on mechanical ventilation. Those of you that have stumbled upon this video, if you're a practicing therapist, I need you to realize what I am teaching here aligns with the MBRC to help the students pass the TMC and the CSC exam. So while you may be thinking, well, this is what I wouldn't do in clinical practice, that's not my purpose. My purpose is to help people pass their credentialing exams. So that being said, we have a patient placed on VCAC ventilation. Okay, anytime your patient's on the vent, you need to pay attention to what type of ventilation is going on, okay? We've got volume control. What this means is that we set the tidal volume, and that tidal volume won't change. What will change is the peak pressure, depending on the compliance or resistance of the airway, okay? Assist control, always pay attention to that too, assist control. What this means is that when the patient triggers a breath, they are going to get the set tidal volume, okay? All right, with the tidal volume of six mLs per kilo of ideal body weight, that's absolutely appropriate. When we set up a patient on the vent, we want their tidal volume to be set between six to eight mLs per kilo of ideal body weight and a set rate of 10. Typically, we want the respiratory rate set anywhere from 10 to 16, maybe 10 to 18. I think some programs teach 10 to 20, okay? But the rate is set correctly. All right, so BCAC, tidal volume 6 mLs per kilo, rate of 10. This patient has a total respiratory rate of 19. This is why mode matters. This does not mean that patient's breathing nine breaths spontaneously. It means they're getting 19 breaths at that set tidal volume. They could be triggering all 19 of those for all we know. The machine could be doing 10, they could be triggering nine. The machine could be given 15 and they trigger four. I don't know, but I do know it's assist control and 19 times a minute, they are getting that set six mLs per kilo of ideal body weight. And when it does that, it's making them alkalotic. It's hyperventilating them. So here's our blood gas. It is a respiratory alkalosis. I will tell you for credentialing exam sake, if you have a respiratory alkalosis, the first thing you want to look at is the PaO2. Okay, if they are hypoxemic, you need to fix that first because it is the hypoxemia that is triggering the patient to breathe faster, blowing off their CO2. If you fix the hypoxemia, then the patient's alkalosis will fix itself, all right? Now, that being said, this respiratory alkalosis is not caused by hypoxemia. It's truly true hyperventilation due to the machine settings, okay? So we have to move less minute volume. So here are our choices. Decrease respiratory rate. That's not it. Okay. In assist control, this is why mode matters. If I turn that respiratory rate down to five and the patient still triggers 19 times a minute, I'm still going to have this problem. So there is no guarantee in assist control that when I turn down the respiratory rate, the total respiratory rate is going to decrease. That's not how this mode works. Okay. So that's not the correct answer. Switch to SIMV with pressure support is, I'll come back to that. Decreasing the tidal volume, no. You don't wanna decrease the tidal volume when it's already set appropriately. In this case, if we decreased it, we'd be given less than what we're supposed to, okay? And we don't wanna do that. Six to eight mLs per kilo is what we wanna deliver, unless it's ARDS. All right, sedate and paralyzed. Okay, that would fix the problem, but really we want the patients to start breathing, right? We want to liberate them from the ventilator. So this is probably not the best choice, okay? Which leads us to switch to SIMV. When we switch them to SIMV, in SIMV mode, 10 times a minute, they'll get that set six mLs per kilo of tidal volume. When the patient triggers the breath, it will be a true spontaneous breath, which is oftentimes less than the set tidal volume. That brings the overall minute volume down. When minute volume drops, CO2 will climb back into its normal range and pH will drop back into its normal range, 
okay? So, and then we can add a little bit of pressure support because that's just always gonna make the patient a little bit more comfortable when they're breathing spontaneously. So, correct answer here, switch to SINV with pressure support. Hope that's helped. See you soon.